question. But you <coughs> mentioned that the customers, you think the customer is the foundation or, or the it's one of our customers. or whomever. What do you do if your uh, funder tries to control your content? Oh, that's a whole other. <laughs> so no. That's the biggest, right? Yeah, it yeah, has I, to be. I think I would tell to the expertise here. So no. Right. Um, I mean, we, I mean, you've turned down money on that. You know, we, I've had a major foundation come to us and want us to work with an a bunch of advocacy organizations they support, and we just said no, and they understood. It's the same way you wouldn't have it in a, in a, in a, in a newsroom where the editor, you know, the public, and an advertiser say, you know, do the story, can you do the story about the wonderful product I have? Can I add to that? Yes. I strongly suggest that you have a funder's policy that's published on your website. So going in, it simply states, we would love to have your support. No, we will not take story ideas from you. Um, you may take money that is around a particular theme or idea, but you have total editorial control and you will not, you know, you basically state it out there and you make sure, and, if, and even make sure that they read it and, and sign to it when they give you the money so that there's no expectation. Because what, you know, the best thing you can do is be 100% transparent in your policies going in to, and that goes for your terms and conditions, that goes for your privacy policy, and that goes for your funder statement. And I also think of, uh, your editorial policy is, is a good thing to post up there. And, and then, then, you know, look, it doesn't mean to say they're not going to try and influence you, but you can say, look, you knew this going in, and, and you'll obviously you understand when we're Make that an addendum to the, to the grant contract. <coughs> I actually had one funder um, who I was negotiating with for a big multi-year grant, and I thought I was going to get it, and then they came back to me and said, we can't give you what we thought will give you a much smaller grant for one year, because if we were going to give you, my board said if we were going to give you that much money, then we wanted you to take an advocacy position supporting the stuff we support. And we knew you wouldn't do that, so we're just going to give you a smaller grant, because we like what you do. And for one year, you can reapply for it, but you can't get that higher level, because we would want you pushing our agenda. I, like, I wouldn't push you. Sorry. 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 Just another issue. Doing investigative reporting, how are you dealing with the risks of libelous? We have insurance. We every story we do, we have pro bono, really good pro bono lawyers. Uh, and when we, our customers, we you know we, we protect them. If, if they, they run our story, it's our responsibility. And we have you know that's clear to them. You know we, they sign little things or that they, they, they get that. And if they if a story is really altered tremendously, uh, you know by a publisher, we we see it. Uh, if they, so, you know, we, we, it's a real serious issue and, you know, we didn't talk a lot about, you know, crowdsourcing or a public insight network or how you use the public. In investigative reporting, it's a, it's a different issue than just getting stuff and, uh, you know, because of the libel risks and the fairness issues. So, and I think all of us are in a similar boat on that. Yeah. I was just going to say, we're running just a tiny bit over time, so I wonder but if we're we having could good time. cut, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think the next session We'll probably continue, Even this, more so, continue yeah. this conversation. So, Even more so. Also, let me say that um, is has uh, negotiated with the online media little network out of Harvard to, to provide access to pro bono and near pro bono for risk management and pre publication review. And in addition, we've negotiated uh, with a media insurance provider to get access to that kind of insurance. It's still expensive. But uh, yeah, hopefully, it's, it's you know we're <coughs> the buying power of the network yeah, to do so. So, so members have these extra benefits. You said cover the freelancers as well as uh, no. the operation. Is it, it, it is, it is, this is for work that you know? It would cover it for us if we put it out. If it's under our, right. you know, to your question earlier, we actually fund freelancers and we have money for we get lots of applications. And it's one of the ways we want to. And we just we don't even have to get anything back. But if we take a freelancer and we fund it and they want us to help distribute and edit it, then, it's, then, then they come under our umbrella. Well, I think this is a really good question. Um, you talked about being able to offer a $200,000 investigative journalism package for $20,000 to a customer. So I'm wondering, how then do you, because I imagine it still costs you a lot of money to do these $200,000. But keep in mind, I'm selling it. Do you resell? Is yeah, it reselling it to I'm all selling it to all and so uh, these different apps. So it's leverage. It's easy, basic leveraging. So, so if we have ten customers paying an average of twenty thousand a piece, then there's that's a dream. That's what we're. we're this is not. This, <laughs> not, this is not what's happening yet. But this we're is not close to what's that's happening. Clear. And I don't. I'm not standing here saying that we're going to reach a sustainable model. Any of us in two days. I mean, this is all it's new. One of the I mean, lanes. We don't think it's you know, necessary. everything I'm telling you, if I'd been here 15 months ago, would have been pure theory. Now we're <laughs> seeing it happen. 
you know, and things keep happening that I never would have imagined. Uh, we are being approached in California by newspapers who want to give us to manage their reporters in Sacramento. I would have never thought, because they have one reporter there and they don't feel like they're getting good, enough good quality stories out because the one reporter is constantly scrambling. And they're actually talking, editors are approaching us as a group. Well, you manage, and there's four or five reporters that each really to give up one. I'm stunned. We don't have the infrastructure to do it, right? I will say, well, we have to figure out how we can do that. But I never would have thought that would have happened. We're connecting newspapers throughout California to work together on stories that they want us to manage for them separately. Wouldn't have happened five years ago. And that is something I never would have put into any kind of you know business plan because part of the return our investors want is collaboration to help coordinate the foundation. So there are things happening in this real world uh, that you know some things I would have predicted, other things completely stunned me and are huge opportunities. And the revenue is not close to what we need yet. Yeah. <laughs>